Hello, viewers. Today, we're gonna read chapter two of, of the Claymore manga, and I'm gonna give commentary on it, just like the last chapter. Um, before we begin, I'd like to say that if you, perhaps, if you want more information about this manga, in the previous video, there was a very good commenter who posted all types of information about this manga. So if you're interested, he knows a bit more than I do, or whoever this person is knows a bit more than I do, a lot more than I do about the manga, and um, some of the things about it. And his comments were very interesting. And he talked, I mean, I don't know if this is a, a male or a female, but they... They gave a lot of information. It's very interesting. It's very rare that I see the YouTube comment forums used so well. So, this is all a very interesting read from Red Moon, Blood Moon. Now, if anyone of you, the viewers, le leaves a comment, I will, I will give it a heart and a like. I will love it and like it because if if you comment on these videos basically I love the fact that you comment and I will like it because basically um, engagement is good it's very good to see different opinions about this he had also he had some very good observations such as um, he believes that or rather he stated that um, Claire is very much like the female paladin knight archetype which which is very which was a very good observation and um, he explains that here. He has so many very, very insightful comments that you, the viewers, might be interested in. All right? So that's on this video, chapter one of our reading of the Claymore manga and, and my commentary. Very, very excellent. Very excellent comments. Okay. Now, let's get started with this. People, once again, do bear with me for the voices. I'm having to re-record this. I don't even know if my voice is going to be strong enough to continue through Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is sort of shorter, alright? Um, so, I'm going to begin. We're grateful that you came. I didn't think you'd get here so fast. If we'd waited any longer, we might have lost more villagers to the Yoma, and I would have failed them as the village chief. The attack started only a few weeks ago, so that's a claymore, a silver-eyed witch. But after discussing it with everyone, I decided to call you. Here's the fee we agreed upon. Please accept it with our thanks. I don't want it. Huh? And slice. Yep, his head has been taken right off. Okay. Thwok. This is a sound effect here. Go, go. Okay, you know, it's probably terrible. The Claymore, she, she killed him. The Chief, murder. Okay. No, look. And now he's turning into a demon or a Yama. He's turned into a Yama, okay. <laughs> if only you had come a little closer, I would have sliced through your flesh with these claws. Gah! What the? Chief! Oh goodness, I mean, I'm trying to do the woman's voice, but it's probably terrible. I thought I'd suppressed my aura, but I guess there's no fooling at Claymore. You used, your, you used our strength to attack us. Damn, damn you. Duh. And, yeah, he's dead. Ch chief It can't be. The chief was a... Whoosh. Kashak. Oh, oh. My work is done. Someone will be sent to collect the money. You will give it to him then. Usual routine. As per usual. All right. Well, actually, that's a repetition of a word. What am I talking about? Anyhow, this is a very picturesque, p 
picturesque scene. Very beautiful. She takes off her clothes and takes a bath on the waterfall. I mean, I see this in a lot of manga and anime. Taking a bathing on the waterfall. I guess it's more... I don't know. It's cooler when you wash under a waterfall or something. Um, and we have <laughs> a very uh, interesting scene here, which... Um, and Red Moon, Blood Moon did talk about the fact that in terms of of sexualization, the bodies in this manga and even the anime are not as, how should I say, they're not as curvaceous, they're not as buxom, the breasts aren't as big, but even so, sex appeal is, as far as I'm concerned, sex appeal is sex appeal. But... And he's right, they do it to men as well. Um, which, when you consider the origins of, of comic books and, and manga, it sort of started, the, the sexualization sort of started with Conan magazines. You had this half-naked man sort of running around and fighting people with swords and such. And I mean, this, this predated Berserk, it predated Guts, it predated... Claymore predated all of this stuff, okay? You know, Pulp Fiction magazines by people like Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft. Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft were good friends. They were writers. Well, they weren't necessarily good friends, but they were friends in the sense that they were writers who collaborated with each other. They shared a lot of ideas with each other. They didn't agree on everything, but they... You know, Robert E. Howard's Conan was basically this half-naked man. He's running off swords and axes. He's fighting. Okay, you know, it's very interesting. And basically, after this, Pulp Fiction, comic books started to get popular. Um, one second, I have to check something, people. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure that the video is running, that my OBS is recording the video because there was an update to OBS, and I, I tried to record this video before, and it messed up, so I'm having to start over again, but anyhow, Conan, you know, this was the original sort of sexualized warrior hero, okay, the sort of barbarian man, okay, <laughs> but I mean, and there, and as you can see, the women were sexualized as well, I don't particularly have a problem, per se, with high fantasy, because in high fantasy, it's always going to be sexualized to some degree. And even if people say it's not sexualized, you know, practicality, honestly. You know, um, uh, Blood Moon, Red Moon did bring up a very important, important fact, which is that under her armor, although it doesn't appear to be the case with... Um, with the armor she wears, there is in fact a leotard that you cannot see in the manga version. Now, I know this because I read, I watched the anime, but you see, since I'm doing commentary and I'm looking, I'm reading the manga, because I don't want to get in copyright trouble with YouTube, so I decided, you know, I'm going to review the manga in order to basically do my media research. And so, in the manga, you get sort of caught off guard because you don't see the leotard and you sort of forget the leotard is there. But the leotard is still high fantasy. It's still, in my opinion, it's sexualized due to the fact that you fight. Armor has the purpose of protecting you. And when armor has no function, the armor is purely aesthetic. Okay? And to me, I just prefer a full set of armor. Now, some people may say, well, they're, they have to be fast. And I understand they have to be fast because this is fantasy and it's, they have to be moving at speeds that, you know, are ridiculous. But the choice to not give them armor is still an aesthetic choice because as we see in Berserk, Guts, Guts wears a full set of armor. And we're going to read Berserk as well. But anyhow... It's very interesting. And I'm not saying that that the manga writers have to write in order to please me. I'm just sharing my observations. To me, I don't have... I don't take any offense to the old sexualized armor sets. Okay? Like Red Sonja. 
Rex Rex Sonia or I guess her name is Red Sonia because I don't think you really pronounce the J in the Sonja, but maybe I'm wrong. But I guess it's Red Sonia, Songha. I think it's Sonja. I just say Sonja because you know I don't really know how to pronounce some of these Spanish J's, so to speak. But anyhow, um, I don't have any problem with this because it's fantasy and basically I know that, but it's just as though. You know, if I were to choose between this and this and talk about defense, there's not much of a difference between her her set, her her Claymore set, in terms of defense, than a, a Shane male bikini. I mean, you know, I mean, sure you have pauldrons, but what else do you have? I mean, the leotard is not armor. And you, you still don't have a helmet to begin with, so you're not dressed for battle. This isn't a battle dress. You wouldn't wear this if you were fighting in a war. You just wouldn't do it. So that's just my opinion. I don't. I am always critical of of things now, just due to my experiences playing games like Dark Souls. I sort of expect a full set of armor now. It's not that I can't read fantasy stuff and sort of realize that you know stuff is fantasy. And that it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be realistic. But even so, um, I I don't know. You know, I sort of I sort of think if you're not going to make sense, at least make it stylish. But that's just my opinion. It's just subjective. Okay. Um, but I do take note of as we review media. You may think, well, why do I keep talking about armor? Because I want to review everything. All of its cultural implications. I know that this is something that didn't come from modern day media because this was in media. Red Sonia is pretty old. I think it's pronounced Sonia. I'm just going to say Sonia because Sonia is easy to say and I don't think it's really Sonja. But anyhow... Who knows? I just... I'd probably be varied with that pronunciation okay but anyhow she wore a Shane male bikini and that's why everybody that's where bikini armor came from it came from basically Red Sonia or she was at least the most popular I mean there's a movie woof and she's not wearing a Shane male bikini but even so you know it's just and Conan I mean Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it the guy who played Conan as well you know, and I mean, this is where most of the sexualization started was with Robert E. Howard's portrayal of Conan. You know, the Pulp Fiction magazines. Pulp Fiction magazines, if you don't know, they predated comic books, folks. This came before comic books, and they were short stories. They weren't visual, so to speak. Sure, you had little pictures before. Um, the story, the short story, but back then people didn't have comic books and you read you read these and you know they had good artwork but the writing was far superior. I'm talking about very good writers. HP Lovecraft, Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard, people who there's no way a manga or a comic book writer would be able to compare. And I'm just, you know, I can only speak subjectively, but hey, I mean, pop fiction is still studied today. H.P. Lovecraft is still studied today. And if you, a lot of people know about H.P. Lovecraft, but how many people know that he wrote for pop fiction magazines? And that it were basically, that they were basically the equivalent of comic books back then. You see, a lot of comic book writers are inspired by Conan Robert E. Howard's stories and H.P. Lovecraft and there's a reason for it because they were some very good writers okay comic books came later they were more visual based and writing based in other words it was more it was better if you got the writing if you got the visuals better you know if you had impressive pictures than if you really sort of wrote good if you wrote a good story so um but yeah, things were very sexual even then. But um, some people may think, well, I'm a little too harsh with my critique of armor, but I always will critique armor. I, will, I always will, basically. Even And I'll just tell you, we're going to be reviewing Pulp Fiction magazines on the channel. 
at some point. And I talk about the armor <laughs> mentioned here too, because I mean Conan and Red Sonya were running around half naked, but and they did have, you know, Red Sonya was a shapely woman, but I don't think it matters really that much how much shape there is because whether they have shape or not. Okay, let me show you the visuals here. Sex appeal is such sex appeal. Okay. Um, now, Red Moon, Blood Moon did bring up the fact, and it's true. In Claymore, the breast size is not as, as big. Okay, and that's, that's the truth. I agree with him. It's, you know, oftentimes in a lot of, not necessarily all Japanese anime and manga, but you do see bigger breasts. But is that necessarily, is it necessarily fair to say that it's not as much sex appeal because the breasts aren't as big? Because, I mean, there's a lot of women who have big breasts. And if you say, hey, you know, based on how much, how big your breast size, you're more how big the breast size you have, it's more sexual. I don't think that's fair. I think sex appeal is sex appeal. If you see a naked, um, or if you see sort of a bodysuit or anything, if you see sort of the backside of a shapely woman or a skinny woman, it's still sex appeal. Um, but that's just my opinion. And I know in a lot of media, some people are saying that, well, you know, she's not as shapely as some of the women you've seen, so it's not as sexual. And that makes absolutely no sense to me. But, you know, I understand the judgment, the logic behind it, but I just don't agree with it. But anyhow, let's continue. Um, so where did I... I don't even know where I stopped. I, yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Okay. Bish! Water sounds. Okay. Um, bish, 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 bish. Splashing sounds. Okay. Washing off the smell of blood, Claire? It's useless no matter how much you wash. Your body produces that smell because of her Yoma blood, which is associated... Yoma, the, the name means evil spirit. And, um... It... It's basically like you're saying demon blood. Okay. And I will continue to re reiterate that point. Ruble, it's you. Did you get the money? And he smirks. He's got the money, it seems. New orders. There's another job. In Straw, village west of here. What is it? Same as always... Find and kill a monster. It's less than two days walk from here. And the killing started barely a month ago. But 27 people are already dead. That's a lot. 20, 27 in one month is too many. Either it's very hungry or there's more than one of them. Everything's ready. The orders will be here in five days. You can wait until then. How many people will die in the meantime? Well, two or three, I suppose. And Kashak Kashan. Whatever sound effects those are. Okay. Leaving already, Claire? I don't like waiting. I'd rather finish the jobs quickly. That's all. Huh. Go then. It's our job to hunt Yoma. What you do with your life is up to you. Which which isn't necessarily true because they're sort of they're sort of um they're sort of bound to this organization. They don't really for one thing, even if they decided to do what they wanted to, you don't have any money because all of your money goes to them. So you would basically be on the streets homeless or something. Most of the townspeople are afraid of you. And, you know, you could live on your own, maybe, but they would come and hunt you. And we're going to, you know, I mean, what he said is not true. Okay. I'll just say that much. We have another town. Okay. Or village or what have you. Hmm. Okay. She arrives. 
Whoosh! The wind is blowing. Um. Right. She is looking around from side to side to see if she can find anyone. It's a ghost town. Everyone's indoors. Given the number of victims, they're all scared to death. No wonder they're afraid to be outside. Right. Someone approaches. Who could it be? Another villager in the exact same clothing that all the other villagers have. And... I did comment... I did reply to Blood Moon about this. Um, he was talking about the art direction. And I told him, I said, this was one of the things that really... I mean, it, it is a small thing for most people, but... For me, when everyone is dressed in the same clothing, it seems awfully uniform. It seems too uniform to me. Um, I like some variety in clothing, even for characters that are considered to be not important. And I know that there, the emphasis is upon claymores, but even the claymores themselves are all dressed in this type of armor. So it's sort of, you know, they're, the claymores are dressed in this type of armor, the villages are dressed in basically the same type of clothing. I like I like variety in art. I like variety in art. And the little things like a little variation variation, variety in the clothing, it really it really helps in my opinion to sort of immerse the reader in the story. All right. Um Looks like her Yoki powers are activating her, um, you know, her demon powers and whatnot. So you're the Yama. Yes. Well, I don't know, necessarily know if this is her Yoki power, but basically her Yama blood sort of senses another Yama and her eyes go like this. I think the Yoki power is when she, her veins start busting out and she looks weird and monstrous. But anyhow... Let's continue. So you're the Yama. Yes. You've got that right. I never dreamed you'd come alone. I was hoping there'd be more of you. You're out in the open. The villagers will see your true form. They're probably watching us right now. Forget about it. There's no reason to hide anymore. She's, she's surprised and confused. Okay. And uh-oh. New people are coming. New Yama have come to attack the Claymore. You Claymores are such a miserable bunch. Humans exist for food as food for Yama. But lately, you seem to think you can resist us. Four of them? That figures. This could be bad. Hey, she's got... Hey, she's getting ready. That's brave of you. Tagging all five of us on at once. Five. And let's see, kab kablam. Whatever sound effect that is, okay. Hiss Wings Can this one fly? Die half breed. Oh, it's just been caught off guard. Oh no. Gosh. Okay, whatever sound effect that is. Arr. Flop. Something. Craziness ensues. Surprise. Oomph. Wee hee hee. Okay. Um. Boom. Boom. Pee hee hee. Okay, weird laugh. Okay. Um. He's attacking her sword, but she's catching it. And his nails are growing. Which, I, I don't know how that works, but, you know. But, he got his arm cut off, okay. Zaba! I don't know who does these sound effects. Who writes these? Who comes up with these sounds? I, I don't understand it. Okay. Go You! Gah! Or something. Mm. 
I don't know if she made the oomph or he made the oomph. I, I don't. I have no idea. I'm not very good at sound effects and in body noises like death cries and war cries and all of that. Whoosh. Okay. Gah. Oh. And he gets his arm cut off. Oh no. And cut right in half. Thump. They're surprised. No. And whap. Okay. She's dodging them. But he knocks the swords down. You. She dropped her sword. Now. Okay. Um. Now she's gripping it again. They're very surprised. And she cuts them in half. Whack. Thump, thump. Okay. Surprise ensues. What? I see now. I thought it was strange that five Yama needed to hunt. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. I'm doing... Oh, my goodness. I'm doing the, the Yama voices. Please pardon me. I see now. I thought it was strange five Yoma need to hunt in the pack. But then, weak ones need others like them to lick their wounds. Okay, this is... This statement is going to be disappro disproven because... Claymores also are going to... Later on, we're going to see the Claymores are going to be fighting in teams too. So, she's saying this now, but, you know, we're going to see... We're going to see how things develop in the future part of the series. Okay. That winch, she dropped her sword as a lure. Grr, grr. Okay. He's flying up there. Flying away. Ah, come back. Whoosh. And he's dead. Goo, goo, ga. Oh, no. So that was a claymore? Was it? Something. Lat. He's flying away, but now she's using her Yoki power. And she's switching. Okay, she's gonna throw the sword. This beaky beaky thing, I will never get used to this. this is basically, every time their veins bulge out of their arms, I don't think that's healthy, but I guess these, the, the Yoma, the demon blood, sort of, I guess, hey, I guess you can do it as many times as you want. Technically, who knows? Except you can't, but we'll figure that out. Um, later, as they use these powers, okay, or whatever, kashash, and she, it did hit kathak. Okay, he falls down. Oh, okay. Shuck Kashan. I, okay. I, I really need to stop doing these sound effects. Why don't I even try? I mean, it's just... <laughs> woo! I can do woo, but the other stuff... Oh, goodness, no. My work is done. Someone will be sent to collect the money. You will give it to him then. Okay, she's walking away. And... <sighs> I mean, the idea of going from village to village, from town to town, it's, it's almost as though the towns and villages don't have much of an identity. It's, it's almost as though they're, you go from one town to the next, you go to one village to the other, you know, it's very, I don't know. And I know they do it in anime and manga, but it's, it's the insignificance of going to a place and then just going to another place. It's, it's almost as though the towns that you go to don't have their own defining identity. And I know maybe that may seem as though it is asking a bit much of a comic or a manga, but I sort of, it's sort of, I sort of realized that. And, you know, this, how boring it, the, the manga gets as we read it. Because it's just, you're just going to another town, you're just going to another village to fight the monsters. But it's somewhat boring, especially in the beginning part. Most of the stuff having to do with cultural implications that we want to 
investigate are going to come later, but for now, it's, it's basically routine work, so to speak. She's surprised. She sees the guy from the organization. Okay. Ah, so you survived. The job is done. Go collect the money for five Yoma. Oh, you fought five of them. Not bad. How noble of you to risk your life for these ungrateful villagers and fight alone against a pack of Yoma. Was it because when you remember your old self, you feel drawn to help? Like I said, I'd rather finish the jobs quickly. That's all. Okay, this was the end of... This was chapter 2, which was a fairly short chapter. And... Um, it's quite interesting, sort of, that this one was pretty, um, and I know in manga and even comic books it can get pretty boring. I mean, not much happened in this chapter, but as we continue to read, we're going to see some very significant things. We're going to, you know, it's not going to be this boring all the time, but there were a few things I wanted to talk about. Oh, yes. We're going to be reading more than one manga. We're going to be reading A Sentence of a Bookworm, which is a very... Because I like to... When I'm reading very serious manga, and especially for this series, I need something a bit more lighthearted to sort of take the edge off, so to speak, of, of Claymore. Claymore is very edgy. Claymore is quite edgy, and sometimes I I like to read something a bit more slice of life. We're going to read this, and just as we usually do, we're going to try to review as many cultural implications as we can. Um, we're going to see what this, what cultural impact this has, and furthermore, this is a very interesting manga and anime, though in this case the anime is actually further along as far as I know than the manga. The manga is is not complete yet, but the anime I've heard is there's more episodes, so but we're gonna be re reading the um we're gonna be reading the um the manga and we may, as I, as I watch the anime, I may be reviewing particular episodes. I'm not, I don't think I'm necessarily going to show the anime because I don't want copyright claims. Though if I do, if I do, I tell you what I do. If I do anime reviews, and if I do anime commentary, I'll put that on BitChute, Rumble, maybe even CrowdBunker, to be honest. But I'm not going to put it on YouTube because YouTube is just not the place for that type of thing. Um, because YouTube always has people giving you copyright claims. And on BitChute, people don't care. People don't care on BitChute. Basically, um, but I'll probably have to make the video smaller in terms of gigabytes. But anyhow, this, this anime talks, this manga and anime talks about reincarnation. And we're going to talk about what, how reincarnation has been romanticized now. And we're going to talk about how the true meaning of reincarnation in Buddhism and Hinduism is entirely different in meaning than how they glorify it t today. Um, in this day and age, many people think reincarnation is sort of an escape. But reincarnation in Buddhism was not considered an escape. It was considered suffering. You didn't want that to happen, but... You know, they promote re reincarnation in many media, especially from Japan. They do it in the, in the West as well, but in Japan especially, this whole idea of you can reincarnate and you can live a better life than you did, that's promoted. But the religion of Buddhism and Hinduism, those religions did not promote reincarnation as being a glamorous thing, but we see it in a lot of anime, okay? So we're going to, there are a lot of cultural aspects in this, even having to do with business and how they've made this little girl act like an adult, that we're going to, you know, who knows when I have the video out regarding this manga, 
It could be sooner rather than later. But I'm going to do different manga. I'm not just going to do Claymore. Um, there's no Claymore's big. Some chapters are are shorter than others, so you know it may go faster than than it than it appears than it might appear. Um, in terms of how long this is going to take to read this, but in the meantime, I'm going to be doing different videos about different manga. Um, we, as I said, we're also going to be looking in the pulp fiction magazines to get some of you familiar with pulp fiction, what predated comic books, what came before comic books, and how how the writing in pulp fiction magazines is different. I'm going to show you where to get pulp fiction magazines for free, how to read them free of charge, and and what you'll need. And I just say this: you're going to need this. You're going to need a dictionary program because those folks, those writers, do not parse. I mean, words. Those folks, they use some very, very, um, very educated syntax and diction. Okay, those folks have some. I mean, it's good writing. I just put it that way. And you can learn a lot from reading writing from Pulp Fiction magazines. Now, in terms of what they promote culturally, they promote the usual in terms of media culture. Witchcraft, demons, swords, swordsmen, sorcerers, you know, that type of thing. You know, Dungeons and Dragons, what have you. And we may review even Dungeons and Dragons one day. You know, we're basically reviewing culture. You know, we're talking about whatever implications it has you know um and um it's just as i've said please do not feel do not feel um scared to to write in the comment section because i'm i'm reading everything i'm learning from everything i i possibly can if you have information please do share it i mean red moon blood moon provided a lot of information on claymore on the manga on the anime it was pretty amazing to get that much information from some comments and that's how I think the YouTube comment section should be. If you'll know I read your comment if you get a heart and you get a like. Okay? If if you don't get a heart, I probably haven't read it yet. So don't feel bad. Don't feel as though I'm ignoring you or that your comment has been deleted or blocked. If your comment gets deleted or blocked, it wasn't me who did it. <laughs> YouTube did it because they censor things sometimes. I try to keep the comments in the comment section, but I've even comment, commented commented and posted comments on my own comment section and they take they delete them sometimes so you know I certainly always give you a heart and I'll always give you a like because as far as I'm concerned the very fact that you commented is quite good to me I want to keep the discourse open there's going to be people of different cultures different religions different worldviews who are going to be commenting on some of these videos and I want them to continue to do that I want them to to share their own perspectives of the media and if you want you you know make your own videos too because I'll look at those I'm always interested because basically this channel is about understanding the media okay we may even do a reading of Red Sonja too and talk more about how <laughs> you know I mean a lot of people say a lot of things about manga, about how sexual it is, but we have to remember that before, you know, it was very sexualized in Western media too. Not so much now because they sort of get rid of all of it. I don't really have any problem with the sexuality of the media because they, for one thing, in media in the West, they still sexualize men. So back then, when Conan and Red Sonja were written, you know, they, they sexualize Conan, they sexualize Red Sonja. So what's real? What's the real difference? You know, it's very interesting. Um, for me, I'm going to talk about the implications of everything regardless. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the meaning of everything, what it promotes. Um, how are things affecting culture? This was also a pretty bad game. But that's a whole other issue. Um... But yes, we're going to be doing different things. What else did I want to do? Oh yes, um, we're going to be looking at Promised Neverland. We're not the anime, but we're going to be reading the manga because this this is probably one of the most significant manga in terms of cultural implications because 
here, and to some extent Claymore too, demons are sort of, especially this one though, they sort of make demons into be, they humanize demons. That's what I keep seeing. I keep seeing the humanization, the sort of, um, the sort of making a demon into a friend or even a, to something understandable. Well, the demons can eat the kids because it's what they should do or something like that. And then you have people who watch it and say, well, why shouldn't the demons eat the kids? And then you, if you're a logical individual and you're probably saying, no, the demons should not eat the kids. I think this is a type of mental conditioning to make us think the demons should eat the kids. And we know that there are pedovores. Okay, it's, I don't, last video, try to type that in YouTube and, I mean, in Google. Well, I mean, Google owns YouTube, but um, different thing. Um, you won't be able to find this word in the Google search engine. But um, the internet is not, I don't know. I'm in a room where I can record without, you know, causing a big distraction to anyone else in this house. But um, this um, this location does not have such good Wi-Fi. I mean, sure, I have full bars, but okay, here we go. Oh, what do you know? You Google actually did show me search results. But anyhow, if you don't know what a pedophore is, it's something that only eats children. This doesn't have the sexual implications for it, but. There are sexual implications between this and pedophilia. So, yes, um, it's very nasty, and Promise Neverland, in a sense, promotes that. And I know some folks may say, well, no, it doesn't. It's, it's demons eating kids, but it's still somewhat suggestive. I'll put it that way. And it's a very popular manga, it's a very popular anime, but it has to do with children being eaten and that's a very disturbing subject but we're going to talk about the implications of this because this has a lot of implications significant implications another manga that we're going to review and we're going to talk about the anime too because this may be another particular um manga that may not be as far along as the anime at least in the western world um, uncle from another world. It, it, there's so many implications to this, cultural implications and racial implications, because, um, and I'm not going to really say why yet, but as you can see, it, the protagonist is this man here. We're going to see what makes him different from other people in a particular fantasy world and what the implications of that is, because. This this particular manga it has a lot of cultural implications. I'm going to be reviewing a multitude of different of manga on particular platforms that don't do copyright claims so often. I'm going to be reviewing the manga, and I may you know share my bitch. You can find my bitch shoot channel up above. I may sh put my Rumble link also somewhere on this YouTube channel description or something. I don't know how long BitChute is going to be going to exist <laughs> because banks have frozen their accounts, but that's what I've read, at least. A lot of crazy stuff is going on, okay? Um, but, you know, that's usual. Crazy stuff is going on all the time today. But anyhow, we'll be reviewing this one. This is a very interesting one to review. Um... And if you want, yeah, take a look at it, folks. It's just like I said, I find all of these anime on 9 anime. I really do. I found Uncle from Another World, too, on 9 anime. Um, let me see if I, if I can find this. Uncle from Another World is right here, I think. Okay, right here. This is some type of... Yeah. But, I mean, it's about 12 episodes in right now, but goodness. I mean, it's... As said, folks, 
friends don't let friends pay for anime and manga. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Or at least not good friends. Unless there are people who want to support the companies that make this stuff. I get my stuff for free. I suggest you do too. Um, and I promote Nat 9 anime a lot because it's so good and I think they deserve the promotion. So I will always... I will always recommend them because, you know, they have everything. And it's a very good site. If you have an ad blocker, you're not going to be, you know, swarmed with ads. So, I mean, I think you should use it, folks. Um, it's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good service. Well, anyhow, folks, um, may the Lord bless you and farewell. Farewell.